Okay, we're on the south side of the home, and we're going to be working our way around counterclockwise. This is the south side yard. All the moss is growing in it. Does that look like drainage to you? Because it, it doesn't look like drainage to me. See these little holes? See these holes every once in a while? This tells us that this is a post-tension cable slab. They make, in this area, they make a couple, maybe three types. They make a couple types of post-tension slabs. I don't know which one's better than the others. Some of them have cleats underneath them. Um, but it is a post-tension type slab. It's a very strong foundation. They pull the cables. It pulls, you know, thousands of pounds of tension on them. They um, burn them off and they seal them over. And that's how our slab foundations have evolved for this part of the country. Most of the home is brick. We've got continuous soft events, and we're going to discuss some soft events in the have discussed soft events in the. Uh, attic video. This is the cap for the fireplace. It comes along, got this nice little tray over here. So uh, I just, it's kind of curious. I mean, I've been seeing these. Looks like it could be sealed a little better right there. Uh, is that supposed to be inset? And, well, you couldn't get the cap off. Jury's out on this. Jury's out. I guess this is a rain diverter to keep the water from going in. You know, as long as it's the back exterior faucet, or at least one of them. The rain gutter is coming down, and it hits the splash block, and they install the splash block backwards. The builders like to say, and then it kind of fans it out like a sprinkler system or something. It's, it's an interesting story. Interesting story. You know, there's different ways to terminate the rain gutters like this. We could brought them in the ground and then brought them out into a cap, you know, pop-ups out here in the yard so people could mow and play and visit, grade the yard properly so that it all drains out towards the street and you know, have children playing out here and stuff. We could do that. Coming on along, this is double-pane vinyl frame windows. These are called weeps. Okay. This screen's bent up pretty good. It looks like they might have had a dog here at one time. Got some scratching on the door a little bit. Looks like I could have had a dog here at one time. I thought I had that unlocked. And of course we got some chalk. Everybody's been having just been having some parties out here. I guess they were playing in the swamp. GFCI works. Now this post has a base around it, so I can't see how this post matches the flat work. So there should be a metal stand under there. I'm just going to say I can't see one. It's not apparent because there's usually not there's usually not one. And the stand holds the post up off of the cement, off of the flat work, so the water doesn't you know come up through capillary action and leach up into the post and. and uh, in a few years, it start rotting it. You know, start rotting prematurely. So we have that. Going along. Continuous soft events again. Okay, right here. Some people call these corner pops. These are actually shrinkage cracks. Now, if they're in the span of a hand, okay, and generally considered to be going in that direction, then that's not a that's not a foundation issue. Uh, we haven't measured the foundation yet. Um, it's already been reported on in the report by now, but it goes in that direction. But the cement and the brick okay, shrinks and grows. The brick actually expands. You'll never be able to measure it. The cement actually shrinks. You'll never be able to measure it. Then they react to the environment, you know, the conditions from uh, temperature and humidity. Um, at different rates, so they expand and contract at different rates, and it, it always shows up at the edge. If that breaks, then that's a brick issue, because that's holding up your bricks. And that crack is actually conducive to wood destroying insects. It's conducive to termites, because termites come up out of the ground, and they come in those cracks. It 
nobody can see to find the wood and they go you know undetected undetected so but that's not a foundation issue not a foundation issue we're gonna go around with the camera pull I'm not gonna be able to walk on this roof of course you already know that by now so double pane vinyl frame see what it splashes out around there see all that new growth there's moss it's on the north side but that's a moss Anytime the roof plane intersects with a vertical plane like a wall, there should be kick out flash in there. This is the downstairs, this is the primary bedroom condensing unit. This is the upstairs downstairs condensing unit, two zones. And this is for the parent bedroom, primary bedroom, call it what you will. This is the primary bath. And um, around, and this is the only siding that I've seen. I mean, we got a little bit up there, but that doesn't count. This counts. We should have Z-bar flashing over this so that water doesn't get behind this and start rotting out your window casement. So we did not have Z-bar flashing around the parent bathroom. This is the water heater. It doesn't count here. I wish I had a better example. But these are weep holes. And anytime you have a horizontal plane above your masonry, you should have a weep hole up here too. Brick is a great surf. You know, great. It's a great product. It's a fantastic product. It's fireproof. This house could burn down. You can still use the brick. Call it distress and charge extra for it. It's a great insulator both for energy and sound but one thing about brick one characteristic about brick is that it's porous so we install weep holes around the foundation perimeter and around your fenestrations but not that one because it's got a wood board there's no brick over that one over your fenestrations because there's most of the time all you see is vapor come out of these most of the time it's just vapor but you know if you have an event they, they will leak as it is, any moisture gets into this wall, just comes down as a dead run. There's no place to go. We did not have a weep hole over here. And this is your water heater, by the way. This is your water heater pressure relief valve. Because it's tankless, we did not, it's not temperature, it's pressure. And it's sized properly. Undo typing, I don't know what that's about. Something happened. Rain gutter. Rain gutter downspouts do not just charge directly onto the roof covering. Now the option is to extend your downspout to the rain gutter, and that's ugly and expensive. But you know this will cause the rain, the roof to you know, age prematurely in that that area. Anytime the wall comes down is perpendicular okay to the wall you should have kick out flashing here and this rain gutter the butt end of the rain gutter there should be a two inch gap right there a two inch gap so that it comes down it kicks it and takes it down to the rain gutter and it discharges over here next to this moss see all that staining that's because you do not have kick out flashing Brick is porous, so much more water hits that wall than in these other walls. Yes, we know the brick is going is porous. We know it's going to you know accept a certain amount of water. That's in our building sciences. This brick was not designed to accept that much water. That's going to cause the wood behind that brick to rot. It's going to cause you know, and rotten wood is conducive to termites. It's pouring right down on your electric disconnect for your condi air conditioning unit. This is called a stick, a level, if you will. And that that's called a level bubble. Okay, and see all that water in there? 
No, I know we got a boatload of water last night. It rained like crazy. All this ground is wet. But that's not drainage. That's not drainage. That's swampage. What happened, I would venture to guess, is that the builder said, because I see this all the time, this builder wouldn't do it. But the builder said, well, if it doesn't dry in 48 hours, we consider that a problem. Well, the problem with that is, this is grading and that's drainage. The problem with that is that's mosquitoes. That's West Nile disease. And then the builder said, well, we don't have a problem. Our warranty company doesn't have a problem with it, so we don't have a problem with it. Well, who owns your warranty company, ABC? Oh, ABC owns your warranty company? Doesn't ABC own you too? Doesn't you own your building company? Yes, but it's different. We're different companies because they one hand doesn't wash the other. I get it. I get it. You don't have to convince me. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. So the builder comes in and he says, I'll tell you what, let's let it go. Three hours, all that. The inspector doesn't know what he's talking about. He says, let it go. And then most people have a cave mentality. Okay? They come home to their beautiful house. They park in their beautiful garage. They walk through their beautiful house. They, they see their beautiful family, they have a beautiful meal, they go on the patio, their beautiful patio, and have a beautiful evening, and they don't spend a lot of time over here. And they don't, and they forget about it. And now it's five years later. Where's the builder? The builder got away. Now, somebody's on the hook. Or not, maybe you like this. Maybe this is acceptable. I don't. I don't tell. I don't decide what has to happen. I'm just telling you what should happen, what needs to happen. But it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to happen. I'm going along. This is the only gate to your backyard. Oh, I got more. See the retaining wall over there? See that? It's my Alfred Hitchcock effect. Okay. Well, it's probably a community retaining wall. It's probably not yours. Usually, and I don't, I'm not a surveyor, but usually whoever owns the high ground, they're responsible for the retaining wall. I don't know. What well, the Texas Real Estate Commission decided, along with some engineers and people much smarter than I, they said this wall it's farther away from this structure than twice its height. You might draw a 45 degree angle. So if this wall is between my, my finger and the top of that retaining wall, okay, if it's at least this far back, it should have no immediate effect on the foundation and is beyond the scope of a trek inspection. It seems like it's doing good to me, by the way. But um, I just thought I'd throw that little disclaimer out there. Satellite dishes should not be installed directly to the roof covering. All right, I've never seen one installed properly. I'm going to have a picture, an illustration, baked into your inspection report that I picked up at a roofing class over 10 years ago. It's been so many years ago, I forget how many years. I want you to close. This door won't close. That's, that's why you're flying open, huh? All right, we'll talk about that a little bit. Look at that. That's your gate. That's good to know. But anyway, this class over 10 years ago, I forget how many years ago, they got an illustration that shows a, a bracket, a jig, if you will, that the satellite dish is supposed to be on. And the only place I've ever seen that that animal, I've never seen one in the wild. The only place I've ever seen it is that picture that I have. It looks like it's an official picture, so I keep officially using it. But you shouldn't. You should have kick out flashing again. Coming on along. The garage floor, okay. Got a little bit of cracking in it. And the builder will tell you, they love to tell you this. And it's true though. Concrete does two things, it gets hard and it cracks. But this floor's got some other phenomena going on called spalling. 
All right, it means it didn't dry right. And the surface isn't real consistent here. So they came in and they tried to fix some spalling originally. Is that what happened? They, someone didn't like the surface of the floor, so the builder came in. I mean, why does the surface not, not match? But it doesn't. It doesn't. We have some that's spalling right there. Now, that's, that's not a structural issue so much. That's, that's a good one right there, isn't it? It's not a structural issue so much, except that, you know, over time it's going to get more and more, and eventually somebody's going to resurface their, their garage floor. You know, it's not a new house. You know, over time, we need to do these things, but by the way, you got a five-year-old house, and you got some spalling on your garage floor. All right. I didn't do this. I did not do this in the garage door video you're about to see. I did not. Come on, you coming down? There you go. This is how I test the safety reverse. Do no harm. I do not do block test. I've got instructions. I've got instructions baked into the report on how to do a block test. I've got instructions on how to do a block test, but on my inspection agreement, the agreement that's posted on the website and I posted in the report, do no harm. I'm not going to do a block test. All I want to make sure is the safety reverse works, and they do. It does. So again, do no harm. Moving on along. And I wish I would have got that on the other video. Because then we would be inside by now. But it is a pretty day, so all the same. Moving on along. We got a little bit of brick work out here. Excuse me, a lot of brick work, but we got a little masonry. A little bit of cracking right in here. Alright, that's about the only movement that I've seen on the exterior where you have these two unlike surfaces that are bonded with a mortar right here and then of course it extends up into the arch over the front portico. And that's really, that is the only movement that I've seen. Let me talk about, you know, the evaporation caused by these and we don't have enough staples. Moving along. Got a little bit of erosion on this corner right here. A bit of erosion right here. And then, this is an in-wall pest control system. Now that's not a termite system. All right, that's for ants and roaches and those things. It's uh, target specific, but it's not specific for termites. But that is an in-wall pest control system. And they're only good if you service them. So you might, um, Find a pest control company and find that if you we've got a little bit of erosion right here on this corner. A tree shouldn't be closer than 25 feet to the structure. This is pretty far out. I get that. And you might not have a choice. It might be the homeowners association that says everybody has to have two trees in their front yard because everybody has two trees in their front yard. So that might not even be an option. But um, a tree shouldn't be closer than 25 feet to the structure. These trees are not affecting. The foundation at this point. Um, if I can't find anything else wrong with the foundation, I will not mention these trees in the report. I'm mentioning them now. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, that's a hard call. That's a hard call. But I wouldn't, you know. Again, it's not time to worry about them. You should wait till they grow up and get bigger, and it'll be more expensive to take them out. Sarcasm. 